this video, we'll talk about the anatomy of the thyroid gland. Thyroid gland is one of the very important endocrine gland of the body. Although it is very small in size, but it is a very important gland. So let's start with creating a backbone to understand where it fits. So this is a picture of uh, the trachea and the larynx. Uh, so if this is a neck, this is where we have our thyroid cartilage and below that we have the cricoid and the tracheal ring. So this is the enlarged version of this area. So here we have the thyroid cartilage. This is the thyroid cartilage. Below it we have another cartilage of larynx that is a cricoid cartilage. Cricoid cartilage is a ring shaped cartilage. So this is the cricoid cartilage. Then here we have the tracheal cartilage ring. So th these are the tracheal rings. Now let's see where our thyroid gland fit. So this is where we have our thyroid gland. So thyroid gland consists of two lobes which are connected in between by isthmus. So let's label them that way. So it's a butterfly shaped gland and these are the lobes. And this is the central connecting isthmus of the gland. Isthmus. If, if you notice you see a projection here this is a pyramidal lobe of the thyroid gland which is not seen in all individuals so it is seen in some individuals and this is the pyramidal gland so if you notice the thyroid gland kind of sits on the neck it surrounds the tracheal cartilage if you notice the location the isthmus occupies the second to fourth tracheal rings, tracheal cartilages. The lower extent of the lobe can extend up to the sixth tracheal cartilage and the upper extent can be maximum till the oblique ridge of the thyroid cartilage, oblique ridge. Now let's have a look at the blood supply. Thyroid gland is a very vascular tissue. So let's have a look at the blood supply. And herein we have the blood vessels. So you notice this is the aorta and this is the external carotid artery. And this is one of the branch of the external carotid artery. This is superior thyroid artery. And the superior thyroid artery enters the thyroid gland through the upper lobe and then it combines with the inferior thyroid artery to supply the gland. Inferior thyroid artery is a branch of the thyrocervical trunk. Thyrocervical trunk. Thyrocervical trunk itself is the branch of subclavian artery. So this is the thyrocervical trunk and this is the subclavian artery. Subclavian artery. So you notice inferior thyroid artery, this inferior thyroid artery is a branch of thyrocervical trunk of the subclavian artery. Subclavian artery is a branch of the aorta on the left side and on right side it is, it is a branch of brachycephalic artery. So if you notice here, so again this is a subclavian artery and this is the thyrocervical trunk and this is the inferior thyroid artery that is a branch of thyrocervical trunk. So that's about the blood supply and it's very richly vascular. There's one more very important thing when we are talking about the blood supply. We have to see how the blood supplies come close to very important nerves in the larynx. So this is a nerve here and this is the vagus nerve. And this is the external laryngeal branch of the vagus nerve. I'll color that. So this is the external laryngeal nerve. Now if you notice external laryngeal nerve comes very close to the superior thyroid artery. If you notice here it's very clear it comes very close to the superior thyroid artery a little away from the gland. But when we go closer to the gland there is distance between this nerve and the superior thyroid artery. So whenever a gland has to be resected for some reason, for any reason, we have to make sure that while ligating the superior thyroid artery the exterior laryngeal nerve is not damaged. So if you try to see the relation, the relation is somewhat like this. This is the gland. And 
this is the superior thyroid artery and this is the nerve so we can just imagine like a V so if you want to ligate the artery the ligation has to be done closer to the gland because if we do it away from the gland it is in this area the nerve and the artery come very close and we can damage the nerve so we have to make sure that the ligation is done very close to the gland so superior thyroid artery is ligated very close to the gland to prevent the damage to the external laryngeal nerve this is a very important question now uh, have a look at the recurrent laryngeal nerve. If you look at the recurrent laryngeal nerve, it comes very close to the inferior thyroid artery in the substance of the gland. So if you notice, the artery and the nerve come very close together when they are near the gland. But if you see away from the gland, if you ligate the inferior thyroid artery away from the gland, there is no damage possibly caused to the recurrent laryngeal nerve. So the relation between the recurrent laryngeal nerve and the inferior thyroid artery is just the inverted V again. So if this is the inferior thyroid artery and this is the recurrent laryngeal nerve, the point here is that the ligation of the inferior thyroid artery should be done away from the gland to prevent the damage to the recurrent laryngeal artery. So here we have away from the gland the ligation has to be done and this is the recurrent laryngeal nerve. And here the ligation has to be done closer to the gland and this is the external laryngeal nerve. So this is important. So that was about the nerves and the relation of the nerves with the blood vessels. So next let's talk about the veins. The superior thyroid vein and the middle thyroid vein, the superior and the middle thyroid vein, they are the direct tributaries of internal jugular vein. So these are the superior and middle thyroid vein. And they drain into internal jugular vein. While when we look at the inferior thyroid vein, both the inferior thyroid vein, they drain into the brachiocephalic vein. So inferior thyroid drain into brachiocephalic vein. Now the superior thyroid vein, it accompanies the vessels or the artery of the same name. But if you notice, there is no middle thyroid artery. So middle thyroid vein does not accompany the artery. There is inferior thyroid artery, but inferior thyroid vein and inferior thyroid artery have different cores. So they do not come together. So only the superior thyroid vein comes closer and anatomically follows the path of the superior thyroid artery. So that was about the vessels. Now let's have a look at the muscles that cover the thyroid gland. So these are the superficial muscles. So this is the sternohyoid muscle. This is the sternohyoid muscle. And this is the omohyoid muscle. Omohyoid muscle. Now, if you look on the this on on the left hand side here, we have removed the sternohyoid muscle and the omohyoid muscle, and we can see the deeper muscles here. So again, we have in here sternothyroid muscle. The sternothyroid muscle comes till the oblique ridge here. So this is. the sternothyroid muscle and here from the oblique ridge above we have the thyrohyoid muscle although thyrohyoid muscle is not related to the thyroid gland so if you notice thyroid gland is it comes closely in relation with the sternothyroid sternothyroid and the sternohyoid muscle now let's let's have a horizontal section of the thyroid gland at this level so it will give us a be better picture so if we have the horizontal section this is a thyroid gland these are the lobes and this is the isthmus so 
posterior to the isthmus we have trachea. As we saw that the thyroid gland lies anterior to trachea, so this is trachea. And here we have esophagus. If we look at this region anterior here, here we have two muscles that cover the thyroid gland. The superficial muscle is sternohyoid and the muscle that lies deeper and a little lateral is sternothyroid. Above that, we have the cervical fascia, then we have the platysma muscle. This is platysma. And the most superficial, we have skin. If you look at the posterior lateral aspect, here there is carotid artery with its content. This picture gives again a gross view of the relation of the thyroid gland with the other structures. So that was a gross anatomy of the thyroid gland. In the subsequent videos, we'll talk about the histology and the physiology of the thyroid gland.